Hi there everybody, Jack here again at the Vinyl Voyage. So today I would like to take you through a load of the records that I picked up on my recent trip to Germany. So what a great week that was. I absolutely love being in Germany. I lived there for three years and I'll take any opportunity I can to get back. Thankfully we're going back most years. Um, we certainly have the last three years to visit my wife's family. But, um, we've been to Berlin the last three years in a row, so possibly next year we might try somewhere else. Um, I'm thinking Amsterdam, some record hunting in the dam would be good. What did I buy then on this trip to Germany? So I'd like to let you into my thought process prior to travelling out. I wanted to buy predominantly Krautrock records, that's what I went over for. And I didn't want to go over and buy things that I could get in the UK certainly on reissue, things like Can, Kraftwerk, all the usual suspects. My idea was to go over to Germany and buy records from bands that would be difficult to get in the UK or bands certainly that I hadn't heard of before. But as we all know, best laid plans and all that, it didn't exactly go according to plan. I broke my rule, I broke my guidelines in the very first one I'm going to show you. So this is Apache by Sachasai Matrakali. Originally known as plain old Craig Smith. It was originally released in 1972, but this is a reissue on Akashic Records. Now, if you're to buy an original of this, they are mega, mega, mega expensive and as rare as hen's teeth. You'd be looking at spending thousands, but of course, this is a reissue. But I've been after this album for absolutely ages. It's kind of lo-fi, acid folk. And I said, I came close to buying it last year in Berlin but it was a counterfeit press that I picked up and I wasn't keen on buying that. This is a reissue from, I think it's 2023, but check out that artwork. So that's such a sigh there. Um, and he's got all this like kind of gobbledygook around the side, Buddha, Zeus. I don't know what that says there. And then he's got down here, Jesus. And on that side, you can see what it says, Satan. If it's an original press, um, that would say Hitler with a swastika. But then some kind of grainy pictures of him on the Inca Trail. I think his second album's called. I think it's Inca. And then him going around the Hippie Trail in the Middle East as well. But there's loads of gobbledygook on the back here. There's a little note from Frank Zappa. Voodoo Spell is probably the best item on this tape. Um, machine Gun, Samurai, This Planet, Earth, Planet. King Me, Rings of Saturn, Bask in Auras of Eternal Longevity, Relax, Hashish, Marijuana, Air, Thick Candles, Glow, Green, Gold. Just absolute nonsense. I don't know if you know the story of Craig Smith. He was originally in a psych band called the Penny Arcade, which are pretty cool. I think that song Voodoo Spell was actually originally done by the Penny Arcade. But like Craig Smith was this kind of young, clean-cut, all-American guy who was interested in show business from a young age. I think he was on a number of TV shows, almost like as a child actor, and then he played in folk bands, and then when the whole psych movement happened, he played in the Penny Arcade. Then he went away travelling, and I won't ruin the rest of the story for you, but he's like an absolute freak folk icon, um, but very kind of under the radar. If you think of guys like Skip Spence from Moby Grape, um, Rocky Erickson from the 13th Floor Elevators, he makes those guys seem like clean-cut, um, middle-of-the-road squares. Even the photos of him, I put up a photo up here, but he had such a hard time with mental problems, with drugs, with all sorts when he was travelling. But um, yeah, if you're interested in kind of freak folk and kind of outsider music, go check him out on Wikipedia. There's a book written about him as well which I'm trying to track down a copy. It's quite hard to get in Europe, easier to get in the States, I think. But yeah, this is really, really good. There's no track listing on the back. I'll just show you the, the inside of it. But a couple of great songs. In fact, all of them are great songs. Ice and Snow is really cool. Starts off with this big horn at the start. Music Box is really beautiful. Voodoo Spells, more of a kind of old band sound. But there's some kind of insane studio chatter at some parts. Other parts just really beautiful. Um, singer songwriter psych folk and I think maybe if it hadn't been for the drugs and if he'd had maybe better guidance it might have worked out for him because he's certainly a, a talented guy but this is really really good next up then we have Banished Bridge from 1973 by the band Novelis this is on the brain label so 
There's the band there on that inner gatefold. And novelists themselves were um, very inspired by the works of a 16th century poet called Frederick Fre Freiherr. And he went by the pseudonym Novelis. It's very poetic, the, the lyrics, kind of a lot relating to nature. The music itself, there's lots of like kind of samples, think like Uma Guma, the um, kind of atmospherics in that album. But the music itself, the Mellotron, Hammond organ, I don't think there's really any guitars, maybe some acoustic guitar. Yeah, Mellotron synthesizers. Um, most of the songs written by this guy, Lutz Ran and Jürgen Wenzel. But yeah, very keyboard driven. Really nice listen. And um, yeah, a band out of Hamburg. But yeah, I was quite keen to pick up whatever I could on the Brain label. This is obviously a, a later reissue on this Orange Brain. Yeah, I hadn't really heard much of Novelis before, so I was um, I was keen to give that a listen. And so far, really, really enjoyed it. Kind of mixture of kind of longer instrumentals. I think there's only four tracks on the album. But a mixture of longer instrumental stuff and then this more kind of straightforward kind of prog rock, um, which novelists themselves called romantic rock. That sounds a bit naff to me, but yeah, I like it. It's good, good stuff. So next then we have Illusions on a Double Dimple by the band Triumphorat. They were a band out of Cologne. They released this on the Harvest label. Um, on 1974, so it's kind of symphonic pop rock, but it, again, it flits between kind of conventional songs and these crazy kind of Hammond slash Moog driven instrumental sections, which go a little bit manic in places. But yeah, like I said, kind of symphonic pop rock. But I was kind of intrigued by this double dimple illusions on a double dimple title, and I found out that double dimple um, was a type of Scotch whiskey, or certainly Dimple was a brand of Scotch whiskey. But I really like that cover as well, the little mouse breaking out the egg. Um, I said just on the the Harvest label. But yeah, I think Triumph are a better known prog band. They toured in the past with Fleetwood Mac, so they were kind of a bit better known outside of Germany. But another nice one to pick up, and yeah, I've enjoyed listening to this over the last couple of days. So I broke my rules again by getting a Swiss band this time. This is Crocodile with An Invisible World Revealed. This is the third album from 1971. Again, a reissue, but check out that amazing artwork. Absolutely fantastic. It's a really well-packaged um, reissue. There's the band there. And the graveyard. But this is a kind of, what would you say, cosmic, psychedelic, blues slop with like just killer harmonica on those kind of bluesier parts there's like really cool mellotron there's flutes in there it's got a cracking booklet along with along with it really trippy again in the graveyard some of the band members have got such cool names so the drummer was called dude dude dust on drums the notes are in both german um and in English, oh. Walty, Walty and Salimo. Check that gig up there. That would have been a good one. Can Eamon Doolan Crocodile. Guy called Mojo on the harp. And my favourite one. Or got a British guitarist. The music's just as trippy as that album cover. Great stuff. <laughs> so next then we've got Birth Control. This is Hoodoo Man. Album from 1972. Birth Control were a West Berlin band. They'd formed in the kind of mid-60s. But by this time it was kind of harder-edged rock slash prog. Really heavy Hammond organ electrifying guitar work and the vocalization in some of the songs is kind of almost like a scat style of singing yeah that side two is brilliant gamma ray is fantastic 
Hoodoo Man, eight minutes as well. They're like really long kind of guitar freak out with like Killer Hammond organ as well. But what I really like about this is they stick some bagpipes in there as well. It's like prog rock with bagpipes. And that final song, um, Cool Stoss, um, the last song on the album, that's got like bagpipes in it. But the very, very last bit has got like this like freaky version of Scotland the Brave, which was amazing to, to hear. But yeah, there's church organ on here. Like just really heavy on the organ again, but crazy artwork. If you look at Birth Control's albums, all their artwork is really quite bizarre. Cool stuff. Unfortunately, no bagpipes in the next one, but it is a Scottish band, Beggar's Opera from Glasgow. This is their second album, Water of Change, from 1971 on Vertigo. So I got this for an absolute snip. Paid 10 euros for it. Obviously, it's not a Vertigo swirl. It's on that spaceship. Um, spaceship label but for 10 euros what's that that's like about eight pounds but the vinyl's great condition sleeves in good condition as well so yeah i couldn't pass this up but yeah i love beggar's opera this one's a little bit um still hammond organ a lot of hammond organ in there but it's not as it's not as classical i don't think as act one the first album it sounds a little bit more conventional i actually prefer the first album to this but yeah maybe with a few more lessons i'll enjoy this one more um sounds really good on first listen but i love act one so i'll be surprised if it um, tops that for me but yeah really pleased to pick that up and for 10 euros that was a a no-brainer so next we've got some quality neo psychedelia from 1987 this is the beavis frond with inner marshland this was their second album on the is it waronzo label but yeah, this is really cool, trippy stuff. Um, if you don't know the Beavis Frond, they're essentially a guy called Nick Salomon. And he's released absolutely loads of records under that name. And um, this one, absolutely full of extended guitar freakouts. He's some guitar player. Uh, loads of phased guitar, backwards guitar, 60s sounding keyboards. Everything you would expect from a really trippy psychedelic album. But the insert is quite cool as well. That's kind of cool wee treasure marks map style insert. The only thing that pissed me off when I bought this is they'd stuck this sticker or these two stickers on the front and they've absolutely welded them on. So I used the hairdryer to get the price off and it's taken a little bit of the cover off. So I'm kind of loath to do it again. That's kind of annoying. But yeah, Beaver Strong, loads of albums. There's lots to dig into. I'd be keen to buy their latest one, Focus on Nature, which I believe is really, really good as well. So yeah, really enjoying this and going to get into a bit more of their stuff. So next then is the third album from Guru Guru. This is Kangaroo from 1972. I've got on the Brain label. I think it was originally released on the Ore label. But yeah, absolutely love this. They were a power trio out of Heidelberg, the university town. Cool. Shot in the back as well. And they've got a really unique sound, I think. I've listened to this album loads since I've got it. And if anything, I think they sound a little bit like the Happy Mondays. They're really funky in places. And they've got those kind of weird vocal stylings from their drummer, who was the vocalist, Manny Neumeyer. But yeah, really like this so far. And... Uh, probably been one of my favourite buys over in Germany. Just uh, brilliant. So next up then we have Green on Red's Gravity Talks. They were like a kind of neo-psychedelic um, Paisley Underground band. This is from 1983. It's their debut album. And after all the kraut rock, it's actually quite a, a nice change. I've only listened to this the one so far, but like the Waters of Change, the Beggar's Opera album, I picked this up for €10, Euros, which was an absolute bargain. Um, it's a later German press, but yeah, really cool. I like a lot of these Paisley Underground bands, and this is, this is just great as well. So Steve Wynn pops up on this as well, on one of the tracks from the Dream Syndicate. But yeah, just really... 
easy to get into. It's got lots of great 60s sounding um, organ, um, nice 12 string electric guitars. It's got a bit of kind of jangly sound at, at parts on Slash Records. Yeah, another one that I was really happy to pick up. So next then, another one that I got from Braunschweig. This is Sweet Smoke, the album Just a Poke. This is their debut from 1970 um, on EMI. So you'd be forgiven for believing that this was another Krautrock album. And as much as it was recorded, I believe, in it was either Germany or France, they were actually a Brooklyn band who moved over to Germany and set up a commune on the Dutch-German border. But yeah, look at that album. Art, you know, I get high even just looking at that. Absolutely fantastic stuff. It was engineered by the legendary producer, Coney Plank. And it's just a great mixture of like jazz fusion, psych, prog, loads of cool instruments on there. There's Mellotron, flutes, tabla. Um, yeah, just really, really good. Ah, it's actually Cologne, I think it was It was recorded. But yeah, tenor saxophone. Um, what else? It's got like a kind of real Eastern influence at times as well. And there's only two tracks, Silly Sally and Baby Night, but built into one of the tracks, there's a section of the Doors song, The Soft Parade. And I believe that they ran into a bit of trouble because they recorded the soft parade and put it on the album without asking for any permission. And when asked why they did that and why they didn't ask for permission, they said that they thought that no one would actually listen to the album and they were surprised um, that anyone had. So, yeah, soft, this version of soft parade on there is really cool. I love that song. But I'll show you, it's just on that blue EMI. So, yeah. Really, really cool, and another one that I've had on the turntable loads since I got it. And finally, Brusel Machina with their 1971 self-titled debut on the Pills label. This is kind of happy acid folk from the band from Duisburg in western Germany. And they got their name from the sound that their friend's motorbike made. So Brusel Machina roughly translates to crumb machine. They said that these motorbike sounded like a crumb machine but it's got that really trippy art see a cool inner gatefold it's very delicate in parts this album so I was I was really conscious about getting a nice clean copy this is a reissue from 85 um, I didn't want too much crackle on the album yeah that pills label is really cool Yeah, I think it's a bit nice mixture of this album between the first side sounds kind of in the same vein as the likes of Fairport Convention or the Pentangle. It's quite traditional, almost sounding like English or Scots folk. You know, the second song itself is called Lassie, which I found a bit funny. But then there's more psychedelic elements on the second side where they introduce more congas, tablas, sitar, mellotron, flutes some nice female vocals on here as well but yeah absolutely fantastic this album really really um happy to pick this up and add it to the collection it's definitely one i'm going to be spinning a lot over the coming weeks so there we have it that was my haul really really pleased with the albums i got i came really close a couple of times to buying some different albums when i was out there i came close to buying a copy of psychonaut by brain ticket but the condition just wasn't quite there when i was in the galactic superstore I could have literally emptied my bank account. There was so, so many great records in there. And I barely moved away from Psych, Prog, and Krautrock. But, the, you know, that covered all genres. But at the end of the day, you know, I've got two kids. They've got to eat as well. I can't spend all my money on records. But it was fun, um, you know, shopping out there with a little bit of money in my pocket. And I can't wait to do it again. So I, I hope you enjoyed me showing you the albums that I picked up. Um, it was great to show them and talk about them. And until the next time then, we'll see you later. Bye for now.